Bringing a new drug to market is costly, time consuming, and the majority don't make it all the way, which is why finding new ways to develop medicines is so vital. With me is Dr. Haran Jyoti from Aztec Pharmaceuticals. Haran, the pharmaceutical industry has seen significant decline in productivity over the past 25 years. Why is this? That's right. There has been a fairly significant reduction in productivity. Now, I think there are several reasons for this. It's quite a complex situation. But if I was to draw out one or two, um, I think there is quite a clear drop in output from the R&D groups in that in the 70s and 80s um, R&D groups were generating a lot of new medicines. So clearly there is an issue with R&D. Uh, another element here is probably the clinical regulatory bodies. They probably become more strict in the level or the type of uh, drug which gets approved um, for market. And then I think finally it's quite clear also that the level of innovation has dropped in the industry. And that's probably again due to the pharmaceutical companies becoming really very large. Uh, and innovation tends to flourish better in smaller organisations. You're involved in a project called Open Innovation. How is this set up to further development? So open Innovation is a concept which actually dates back to the 60s. And in essence, it allows an organisation to import and export expertise and knowledge with the purpose of increasing or fostering internal innovation and maximizing the commercial potential for the organization's products if they're a company for example. So I think open innovation is really now something which uh, the whole industry, the pharmaceutical industry, is really exploring and uh, experimenting with. Uh, in the context of the pharmaceutical industry you see large pharmaceutical companies such as AstraZeneca here in the UK relocating their R&D base from the north of England to Cambridge and largely to be able to operate in an open innovation manner with the local university, obviously Cambridge, a very famous university, and the biotech sector. So the whole Cambridge cluster is actually a great example of an open innovation life sciences cluster. Funding is of course a challenge for pharmaceuticals. How do you manage this and how much of a setback would you say it is for innovation? Yeah, I mean funding is obviously a critical need. It's very expensive to, uh, to, to get a drug from discovery all the way to the marketplace. Estimates range from one to two billion dollars. So for us Aztecs, um, our funding needs when we started the company back in 99, we raised around 50 million pounds from venture capitalists, both in, from the US and in Europe. But later on, as we were able to develop our drugs, we needed to partner with the larger pharmaceutical companies who would then pay for the late stage development, which is usually the most expensive part. But I do think there still is a, a key issue, uh, although the environment has improved in the last 20 years in the UK for biotech. And that issue really is the lack of appetite from the public markets for biotech stock. And that maybe is a kind of a cultural difference between the US and, say, the UK. What breakthroughs have you seen recently and what innovations are you aiming for in the future? I mean, I think we're sitting here at this stage in the trajectory of the pharmaceutical industry in a very good place because there's been a lot of biomedical breakthroughs. 20, 30 years ago, we had the, um, the human genome being sequenced, and that has now finally led to a lot of opportunities to discover new drugs for different diseases. Um, more specifically for uh, Aztecs, we focus in, uh, on oncology and cancer treatments. So the whole immunotherapy, immuno-oncology area is actually very exciting. But actually, Aztecs is a world leader in a technique called fragment-based drug discovery. And that's a new way of generating small molecule drugs. And that is, again, another major development we feel. Pharmaceutical companies do sometimes have a strange reputation when it comes to public perception. Do you think the government should do more to support the industry? The government clearly has a role, but I would say that the last 10, 20 years, the different governments of the different political colours have all been pretty supportive. And I think we see a lot of investment from government initiatives, the Biomedical Catalyst Fund. I'm also a board member of the BIA, and that's something uh, which is a trade organisation and the Biomedical Catalyst Fund is something we've pushed the government to continue to provide. Um, so I, I think uh, the government does do a lot of positive things for the sector. I think the industry also has to uh, speak up. We've made a lot of great medicines, we've treated a lot of 
terrible disease is. And I think sometimes uh, we can maybe um, be a little bit more vocal about that to ourselves. Finally, how do you see R&D evolving in the future? Well, I actually see R&D um, from, from a very optimistic uh, perspective. I think we're in a very innovation uh, rich culture now that the ecosystem with this new framework of open innovation of working with large pharma, small biotech and academic centres, I think that allows us to flourish and I think this was a main reason why Aztecs, we were acquired in 2013 for around 900 million dollars by Otsuka Pharmaceuticals and one of the key reasons they acquired us was because they could then have a foothold in an innovation cluster in Europe. Karen, thank you. Thank you.